Hello YouTube, Ronan Kazi. Again, messing up the beginning. We got Diablo 4. Today, I have a special guest here today. The one, the only, Meech. <laughs> Meech, are you at Meech on YouTube? Yes. Um, How do I spell that, Meech? Meech is the name of the channel, but you can find it like with the slash. You do the at, it's Randy Moss 7908. All right. Uh, do you have Diablo 4? Yes. What class is your main, if you have My one? main class, the only class I've played so far in the live version of the game is Sorcerer. Of course he did. Did you know Sorcerer's the most popular? No, I did not. Because out of everybody I know that plays this game, they all play Druid. So people have been saying that Druid's <laughs> number one, but it, it's not. When I look at all this stuff, it's the worst. You only see Druids running around and Barbarians. That's because... Rogue that's the, doesn't exist. Yeah, Rogue doesn't exist. So uh, let me frame what today's video is. Today I want to give you... You might have noticed a little word critical. And why I have that in is I want you to critically think. There's a lot of videos out here. I'm not saying mine's the best, but people get a character at level 50... And then they want to tell you that's how to play. As you're leveling one of these characters up, I'm showing you what the comparison of the gameplay is. That's the critical thinking. That's why I put the word critical in there. So I'm really big in that. I don't like people that make false narratives or try to give you opinion or don't play classes. You'll notice Drew's not in here because that's my main class. And I just run through everything with the Drew. So uh, I could tell you miles and miles about Drew. But what do you like about Sorcerer, Meech? Honestly, it's just, I'm thinking about the critical thinking. When I was really picking my class, I thought about, I'm a hardcore player, so my class is really going to be what I'm sticking with the whole time. And my first character, I wanted something, you know, engaging. So I was trying to think which class is going to keep me the most entertained. So I really picked it because it was the flashiest, the skills, you know, and coming from other MMOs and, I normally like a class that is almost like elemental because I play Guild Wars 2 and you can play the elementalist in that. So I really find the the fact that you can use all the different elements is pretty engaging there. Uh, we were talking earlier with another uh, YouTuber uh, offline, but you mentioned that uh, there's a lot of nostalgia that this remind you of Champions of North. What, yeah. what about that <laughs> oh, makes you man. feel Champions of North? So, Champions of Norath, I think it's Return to Arms. I said it wrong. Uh, it's just, it was a dark, almost dingy game. It had like a, almost like a creepy feel about it. And I remember playing, I think it was the Necromancer in that game. It was like a dark elf you could play as. It had a lot of AoE and a lot of, the, just the whole aspect of, you know, the, the loot glowing on the ground when you kill something and seeing different colors, the purple and... You're getting teleport scrolls, you know? It's just a real nostalgia vibe coming from almost a, a genre that really not a lot of... It's almost a dying genre, I guess, in a way. In the AAA sense, I know there's a lot of indie games, but yeah, it's just a, a, a really a real, good game. Yeah, <laughs> and you had played Diablo 3. Uh, what What do you remember about Diablo 3? I, rem I remember Diablo 3. It was... <laughs> I remember... I know what you remember most. Or maybe that's not The most. thing that comes... To the thing I know what I, I remember most. We... I remember dying. Because <laughs> <laughs> we beat it on hardcore mode. And that took about, I want to say, seven characters. And you'd get to level 37. And you'd die. You'd get to hell. You'd die. You'd get to the final boss. But... There's just a lot of learning experiment experiences from that, and it also makes me think, like, when you think about it, you have to wonder, why did I die? How did I die, and how do I prevent that? That's a, that's a really good point, and it's to get everyone back to critical thinking. So how do you handle those situations where you're faced with a situation? I'm not talking about decision-making. That's completely different. Where you got to figure out what's happening, where you have to make a decision based on I got these set of I have this data and how do I how do I do that? So in Meech's case, like when he died, that's kind of you think after action, how did I die? 
I've showed you that like in legendaries on the division two where if you die you have to start the game all over no one wants to do that so it's pretty easy for me to articulate those things in the division two to people that play division two but what would be your number one thing in I'm sure you've died first off have you died any with your character on Diablo 4 I've died once and it was around level 23 it was one of the bosses where you're killing the tumors you're trying to find Lilith you finally cross the black lake and you kill the tumors to pass through and you run into uh, the boss there and so as soon as I got in I just started <clears throat> DPS and the boss like I was guns blazing and she has a mechanic where she washes the the floor with blood and it does a fuck ton of damage to you there's no way for you to survive it because there's a uh, mechanic where you go into the bubble and I, I didn't know that <laughs> so I that's I think I dropped... the one where you have the knight comes in and bubbles up yeah okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I and died I in that one I didn't know that you're supposed to go in the bubble, so after that death, I'm like, okay. So you've only died once with your character so far in Diablo 4? Yeah. That's fucking amazing. I thought I was going to, I know what I'm doing. Then I die, And then I just fucking die all the time now. But So that's really great. So you're ready to go, when that opens up where you can go to hardcore mode, you'd love that. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so what did you do differently since then? I slowed down quite a bit because, you know, I did a little more research. I, I went into it trying not to look at YouTube content and get the game spoiled, but I realized I'm going to have to do a little research on bosses, especially if I don't want to just keep beating my head against the wall. So I'd say, you know, understanding where your weak points are in your playthrough, you need to... So instead of you uh, just saying to yourself, I'm not on hardcore mode, and uh, this is normally when I say thank you for subscribing, sharing, <laughs> unsubscribe, resubscribe, comment, like, notifications. I have a Discord channel you can go to. Hey, and uh, tell me what you think of Meech. Uh, what I do is what I found is if I don't die in the first 30 seconds of a fight now, I won't die. Like if I get rushed like an alpha, you know, alpha yeah. strike, and I'm not ready for that. I don't think I have enough heals for that. But normally what happens, uh, I'll figure out the mechanic now after the first death, and I won't die. But I have way more deaths than that. Yeah, and it really is just that. In hardcore, they have, I learned after I died, they have potions you can use to evade death. They also have a teleport scroll, an emergency teleport. You bind it to a key, and you hit that, and it pulls you out of wherever you are. So That's where I think Rogue is... Uh, You'll see in the video where Rogue, I, I go stealth. That I, If I had a hardcore character, I would probably be Rogue. That was the next option. The, the one thing I'm going to tell you about the videos, I sped Rogue up the most, then Barbarian. Uh, but the Rogue, I really played super conservative. I only use Caltrops and uh, throw in three knives. And the rest of it's, you know, that's mainly what I'm doing. And now I got that bow tack. I'm curious, which one did you have the most fun with? The rogue is, well, there's only, okay, <laughs> just so that everyone knows, there is only one class in MMORPGs. And it hurts me that Meech says that everyone, every doofus is playing a druid. <laughs> Everybody but, plays druid. But druid is the only class because you can do everything with it. And so uh, I the druid is... Right now, the druid's my druid is unkillable, but I was in with a necromancer, and they're unkillable. Now, we both recently uh, did that special quest where we, we upped the level, and all they do is put it three levels above you. So the first tier is I'm like level 50, and the, the guys were level 53. <clears throat> so it was a little more tough. But in the boss fight, absolutely got one shot. So, like, if you don't, aren't aware of the mechanic, so we, we, not, not in the, not in the mission, in the mission, we just crushed it, it was easy, which I like about, a little side net about Blizzard, there's a couple things that are great about Blizzard games, Diablo being one of them, 
one you can tele teleport back and get your potions or yeah. or get rid of your stuff. And number two is they don't they're not such a, uh, insert bad word that they make the game so hard that you don't get to see the content. So we got through to see the content. If I don't beat the final boss on the hardest content, it's okay. I've got to beat the boss on normal. Yeah. They really let you go anywhere, too. They're not very restrictive in this, which was surprising. I was expecting almost like a, a game on rails in a way. But you can you could just go explore, and you don't have to do the main quest. It's really up to you. That's what I did at first, and the, the person I played with sometimes, they were like, they out-leveled me like in a day, and I was like, fuck. Because they just did all the side quests. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we're thinking of, we're thinking about critical thinking, which is kind of stupid and redundant. Sorry, YouTube. I'm an idiot. <laughs> um, but in your outside life, you're a manager of people. Mm -hmm. And so, when you get new folks in, you probably have a process how you want things done. Do you give them a checklist? Is are the procedures written down, or do you do something different? I normally just feel them out, leave them, because how, everybody learns different. How do you, how do you, get, well, okay, that's a good question. How do you tell what learning styles they have? You just, I personally, I just leave them be for the, the first day. I don't really talk to them. I just put them in. It's like dropping a baby in a little play. Meet, you're not going to talk to me? I drop them in their little play area and see which toys they touch first. You know, see what where they uh, get drawn towards. Do they talk to coworkers, ask for help? Do they just brute force it, try to figure it out? Do they, you know? So you kind of let them fail, and then if they fail, do you jump in then? And then, what what do you do? I mean, you're not working in okay, just YouTube. Not working in an emergency room where the no. consequences are... No, no, it's very low risk. It, okay. So it's just really seeing how they handle it. And, you know, I'll, you give them a nudge in the right direction, but I'm, I'm really curious to see what kind of person they are under stress to see who I'm going to be working with because my job, everybody's in the same building and the building's not that big, so... I, I really want to know if I'm here working with someone who's going to be able to, you know, handle the pressure, handle the, the job. And So do you see any signs in your job where they have to exhibit critical thinking, like where they got to figure out, like, you know, yes. do you have any examples that come to your mind? Yeah, so <laughs> I work at a restaurant. So where you first start is answering phones and washing dishes. So one of the main things that I can see the a dishwasher working on critically is almost their method of hanging their dishes up to air dry, having them in the rinse sink and in the, the uh, wash sink. Oh, crap. So I might fail that. So let me tell you what I would do and tell me if yeah. I'm a good employer. Yeah, let's hear. So <laughs> I'm going to put the rinsed. So when they're done, I'm going to put that over an empty sink so they're going to drip into the sink so it doesn't make a mess. Mm -hmm. And then my wash ones, hmm. Well, what I'm going to have is a row of them. So I'm going to have like a process. So my yeah. dirty dishes are here. I put them in soapy water. Then I put them into the rinse water. And then somehow I have them hanging over something else. Is that close to doing something? Yeah, and it's, it's funny that you put them in a line because that's really what you got to do. But you would think you would start from thinking towards your dirty dishes to wash to rinse to you have to dip them in sanitizer water, then let them dry. Right. But you really think about it backwards to the other way because the main thing you want is to have your dishes air drying. So anytime you're doing anything, you know, it's a process. And you know what's interesting that you say that? So I want everyone to think about this. What he's saying is... <clears throat> He knows what the solution is, and so one of his ideas for critical thinking is to take your solution and then work back upstream. They call that upstream in uh, lean manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Yep, and a lot of the times when you're critical thinking, sometimes I find you can think too hard. Sometimes yes. Sometimes you just you have to do, you just have to do to figure it out. You know. Well, that's just what we got he going on here. Yeah, that's what we the got. Rogue just finished. The yeah. necromancer finished. Nope, necromancer still going and the barbarian. Sometimes you just gotta see what. And and really, the necromancer was the second fastest. I don't think I did the sorcerer the right way, but 
I want to wrap this up. Uh, Meech, I really appreciate you jumping in on this uh, Ronan Kazi extra. Thanks, YouTube. We appreciate you. Talk to you soon. Bye.